Hey there folks, Rel here, and welcome to basic training for Planetside 2 on the PlayStation 4. Regardless of whether you're an experienced shooter or someone who's just taking the first steps in the genre, Planetside 2 will take some time to learn. It's a massive war that pits hundreds of players against one another at the same time, so this guide aims to help you sort through some of that initial chaos that you'll likely face. When you first create a character, you'll choose to fight for one of three factions. The loyal Terran Republic wage war to unify all empires in the name of peace, the rebellious new conglomerate fight to maintain their independence and freedom, and the zealous Vanu sovereignty seeks the evolution of humanity through ancient alien technologies. Each empire has unique vehicles, weapons, and abilities associated with them, but you're also free to create more than one character under any faction of your choosing. When you first log in, you'll be sent to your faction's warp gate on the continent of Kul Tyr. Warp gates are safe havens for your faction found on each continent, and Kul Tyr is a small training continent available for players battle rank 15 and lower. Battle ranks are one of a few different forms of progression in Planetside 2. Your battle rank is a direct result of how much total experience your character has earned, and experience is gained by any action that helps out the war effort. To start earning experience, you're going to want to find a fight and go help your allies. Remember that this isn't a small session-based shooter. Planetside 2 is a persistent war that rages on even while you sleep and because of that, the fights will constantly be evolving. You can quickly bring up the map by pressing the touchpad, and you can vary the zoom level by pressing L2 or R2. On the map, you'll see colored hexes that indicate which territories each faction has control over. In order to assault an enemy base, you need to have ownership of a hex that's connected by what we call a lattice link. Lattice links are hard lines from one territory to the next, and they determine which bases can and can't be assaulted at any given time. Now getting to a battle is done in a few different ways. Provided you have enough resources, you can always drive to your destination by creating a vehicle from a friendly vehicle terminal, or you can quickly redeploy to another available spawn location from the map screen by pressing square, or you can also press triangle to be dropped directly to where your faction needs you the most via instant action. Capturing bases comes down to whoever can maintain influence over the control points. Control points are shown on your minimap as a letter so that you can easily call them out. Standing on a control point will transfer control from the enemy's hands to yours, and provided you have ownership of enough control points, you'll slowly gain influence over the base, as shown by the timer above your minimap. Once a base changes hands, enemies won't be able to spawn there anymore, and you'll gain control of the territory and its benefits. So after you've been killing the bad guys and conquering bases for a while, you'll probably want to upgrade your equipment. For every 250 experience you gain, you'll earn one certification point. Certification points are the in-game currency that can be used to purchase and upgrade any non-cosmetic in Planetside 2. On top of that, for each rank you gain until Battle Rank 15, you'll earn an additional 100 certification points as an added bonus. If you press the Options button and go down to your Infantry menu, you'll be able to see your available loadouts and equipment. While on this pane, you can browse between Classes, Equip, Purchase, and Upgrade various weapons and abilities. You may notice that certain classes and equipment slots are locked out, but will become available to you as you increase in battle rank. One of the most important places to invest your certifications early on is into the ability and tool slots of your support classes. As an example, if we select our Combat Medic's Medical Applicator, we can press Square to invest certifications and level it up. Ability and tool slot upgrades are inexpensive and they will pay dividends later on, as they usually allow you to gain more certifications more quickly as you play. Weapons in Planetside 2 are primarily side grades that tailor to specific situations or specific playstyles. One weapon is not inherently stronger than another, so I suggest that you do not focus on unlocking weapons early in your career. Speaking of classes, you'll want to use what's most appropriate to the situation and you can switch to any of the five standard classes by visiting an infantry console found at any owned base. The Light Assault has a jetpack and is skilled at flanking enemies and circumventing base defenses. The Heavy Assault carries a high-capacity light machine gun, has a rocket launcher to deal with enemy vehicles, and can activate an overshield that soaks additional damage. The Infiltrator class can cloak, carry sniper rifles, and lay down detection fields for allies. The Combat Medic can heal and revive allies, and also has access to long-range assault rifles. And the Engineer class can resupply infantry ammo, repair vehicles and base defenses in allied max units, and even drop a small turret for their own personal use. Both the Combat Medic and Engineer classes are great for earning certification points through support actions, 
and are a valuable asset to any fight. If you're having trouble earning certification points, try to focus on these classes in particular. Before we cut you loose, I'd like to offer some general advice for living and dying on the battlefields of Araxis, and the first of which is that you will die a lot. There is no way around it, even the best players live life only minutes at a time. The second thing is that this is a team-based game, so coordinating with your squad and rallying them toward a common goal is more powerful than running around on your own. And lastly, don't be afraid to ask for advice. Remember that this video is only one of a large series dedicated to helping you learn the game, so feel free to explore later videos to further your grasp on this massive first-person experience. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.